If you're a parent of a kiddo who is struggling with stress, meaning they're withdrawn from their life, they're no longer that healthy, happy, outgoing, fun-loving kiddo that you knew that they always were, then watch to the end of this video so you can find out some tips and strategies to help your kiddo reclaim their happiness, health, and joy, and overcome stress. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam McDonald, brain health expert, helping you rewire your brain so you can live a better life. If you love this content, make sure to like and subscribe so you get the notifications for each week's new video. So being a parent, as well as a family practitioner, I have the privilege of being able to work with lots of families and kiddos. And I also have the distinct honor of being able to see when some kiddos are at their worst, when they're struggling, and oftentimes when they're at their best too. So some things that I've identified in working with kiddos and teenagers is looking at these two different stages that we call wound up and worn out. So when you have a kiddo that's wound up, it's exactly as it sounds. They may be a bit more angry, they have more emotional outbursts, they're on their last, you know, they're at their last nerve, so to speak. Or maybe as an adult, you've experienced this as well. You say something that you don't mean to your partner or your significant other. You just can't seem to handle one more task or one more thing that somebody says to you. This would be what we call the wound up stage. Now on the flip side of that, worn out is when you've really been in the wound up stage for too long. So now you're in this state of withdrawal. Um, medicine would probably call this a state of depression. Uh, and this is where you're no longer wanting to engage in those things in life. You're no longer finding joy in the things that you're doing. Your kiddo's no longer finding joy in the things that they're doing. They don't want to play with their friends. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to go to the, the activities that they normally would love to do. They really just want to be left to themselves. And for a certain short period of time, this is totally okay. We all need our little quiet time to be able to recharge and rejuvenate ourselves. But prolonged periods of this or as a parent, when your intuition is starting to speak to you, you know that something is off, but you're just not quite sure what it is, right? So these anxious periods, this wound up phase, this wound up phase, and these worn out periods, these depression phases, I mean, these are all parts of the, the ebbs and flow of life and of being a parent. But again, prolonged states and too much of one or the other is never good. And unfortunately, the traditional medical answer to these things is medication, which is going to have its own different types of side effects, whether that's going to affect appetite, sleep, and even mood regulation in itself. So we need to understand first what is happening underneath the surface with these wound up and worn out stages. And it, its basis is in neurology and how the brain and nervous system works. So understand when you get stuck into these wound up stages, you're activating the fight or flight part of the nervous system. So that is our threat detection or our survival mode in our brain, meaning that we're seeing a threat, we're seeing danger, and we're activating the fight system to be able to, get a, to, be able to take care of it or the flight system to be able to get away from it. And the question I often ask parents is when you're stuck in a fight or flight mode and you're stuck in survival mode, how well do you want to socialize with other people? How well are you willing to listen to directions and to enjoy things when you're constantly stuck in a survival brain? The answer is not very much. And the same thing is true in our kiddos, right? We've, our kiddos all experience the same kind of stressors that we do on a daily basis. They have to engage with other people. They have to deal with the certain things in the air. They have their own, you know, different emotional uh, things they're trying to perceive that they maybe can't totally articulate, but they have the same kind of stressors that, that us as adults do. Maybe not the financial piece, but they, they can pick up on all of that. So their nervous system is going to be tuned to how you as a parent are as well. So if you are a person who notices that your kid's being more in this anxious state, the first thing you need to do is check in with yourself. Understand what is my neurological state and system and how, how am I functioning? Am I stuck in this fight or flight state or am I able to access the relaxation and healing part of ner my nervous system too? We often call these the gas pedal and the brake pedal. The gas pedal being the fight or flight part of our nervous system and the brake pedal being the relaxation, aka parasympathetic healing mode of our nervous system. So initially we go into this fight or flight state where we're wound up, you know, we're trying to get away from this particular situation, we're expressing anger and outbursts and everything else. If this is prolonged for a long period of time, meaning we're stuck in this fight or flight mode, what eventually happens is we lead to this worn out stage because we're not getting the adequate rest that we need, we're not getting good quality sleep, we're not getting good quality healing time, we're stuck in survival mode, so we're burning through proper nutrients. We're not absorbing things very well, and we get into this just worn out stage where we just we don't want to do anything else. We're too tired to do anything because our nervous system is fried. So as a parent, this is where you need to identify in them, in your kids, and in yourself. Hey, are, is my kid possibly in this worn out state? Are they worn out from the events that happened through the pandemic and now hereafter? Are they? worn out from all the different changes and stuff that have happened in school? Are they no longer thriving because of these particular situations? And understanding their nervous system is gonna be finely tuned to their environment and to you as well. Now, in terms of how the nervous system 
works in terms of is it stuck in that fight or flight mode or relaxation mode. This is all about how you adapt to stress. So next thing you need to look at is, is there any particular stress happening in your kiddo's life and yours that may be self-inflicted? Meaning, are there certain lifestyle habits that are making it harder for you to be able to live and thrive on a daily basis? So the often most common ones are things like food as well as sleep hygiene. So if you're a person who eats fast food all the time, well, you're taxing your body and not giving it the proper nutrients that it needs, as well as your kiddo, you're not giving the proper nutrients that they need to grow and develop and have a healthy, happy, functioning nervous system. So fast food, got to cut it if it's something that you're doing every single day. Now, another common one that we see is the overuse of technology. So people that are stuck on iPads and computers and phones all the time, you're setting those examples for your kids. And if your kiddo is one who loves to scroll on the phone, loves to play video games, is constantly on these things, we well, need to look at and see, are they abusing it? Are they using it too much? And also, are they using it at the improper times? Meaning, are they maybe using video games and TV and movies and all that stuff closer to bedtime when they should be winding themselves down and going to get a nice, deep, healthy sleep pattern? Or are they winding themselves up, again, playing video games and really getting the nervous system stuck in that fight or flight mode? So these lifestyle choices and habits can be big pieces that can be self-inflicted by us that can cause our adaptability levels to decrease our stress modes to go through the roof and our kids to be anxious and not able to properly adapt to their demands of their life on a daily basis. So lastly, and probably the most important tip when it comes to helping a child to overcome the overwhelming stress is understanding what their nervous system function is. So our life and our current state of health is the result of our actions and habits and patterns of what we were in the past. So we often see a lot of kiddos and there's this big trajectory that we see in terms of symptoms and function and things that come up in terms of what's going on with the kiddo. So in terms of this timeline, we often see there's a problem happening with baby. It's usually something like torticollis or colic or possibly ear infections. If that's not taken care of, the standard medical line is that they'll grow out of it and that will go away. Problem is, is that's not really being played out in the science. and being played out in what's actually happening with kiddos is because what happens is they grow out of things like colic and constipation and ear infections and they grow into things like sensory processing, ADHD and focus and attention issues. And then they grow out of that stuff and they grow into things like anxiety, mood disorders and being able to act, you know, be able to function in our daily life in our societies and teenagers. So we see these kiddos have this trajectory in this period of how they're they're functioning and that all has to do with how their nervous system functions. So again, if they're, if they're in this chronic fight or flight state, which can be measured with technology, things like heart rate variability and EEG scans, we can look at how the nervous system is functioning, find out what their baseline level is and see are they off on these their trajectory patterns? Are they off on their function? Are they stuck in this chronic fight or flight mode? And then we can intervene or you can find a practitioner that can then stand, step in and intervene and get them back onto this trajectory of health, healing, happiness, so that your kids can get that shine back. They can stop being stuck on this medical merry-go-round. They can stop being stuck in these worn out and withdraw patterns. They can stop being stuck in these wound up patterns and they can get back to the life that they wanna live. So getting your kids analyzed, getting them tested, see how well they're functioning, getting them scanned, is probably the most powerful thing you can do as a parent to help your kid overcome stress. So on that note, you should be healthy by choice, not by chance. And for that reason, I will see you on the next video.